This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it is the awesome cast. It's time to get geeky, get awesome. And we are here in the Sorgatron Media podcast place <laughs> in Beachview, ready to get awesome with you today. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter here. And uh, also with me, uh, well, first Apprentice Mike is here as well. There he is. He's got the shades because it's very sunny in here. And also uh, on the couch is John Jachilla, Gadget Guru of Big Bank International Esquire. How's it going today? I understand you you were... You were um, talking to fruit people today and asking the serious questions. <clears throat> yeah, like what happened to your Mac book <laughs> what, line? You informed them something <laughs> happened to their Mac line. That's fun. That's how top secret it is inside. I of love Apple. it because like so. I had a meeting with Apple today. I'm just like, excuse me. <laughs> so, anyways, and that's that's not even like the more that's not even the. the the fascinating part of the story he told, but that's for some other time. Anyways, this is the awesome cast. Chilla, you're ready to get awesome with this. Uh, Dutters is on assignment. I believe uh, she's on a trip to test drive those VR um, sex dungeon chairs that she sent in uh, last week. So uh, I hope uh, I expect the full report when that happens. Uh, so we- <laughs> you can check out everything at awesomecast.com. Please hit us up at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com and tweet us at awesomecast and Facebook us, awesomecast as well. And uh, we're and please join the awesomecast group on Facebook. A lot of great discussion, a lot of stories that come into the show from you guys as well uh, come from that awesomecast Facebook group. Uh, and us, hit us up at that email address again, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com if you're interested in advertising or to be part of the studio audience or if you want to learn what's going on here, like my here hanging out in his uh sweet arnold shades um and uh it, and and missy producer missy will answer your emails even though she's in california right now um that was really loud producing the show uh but anyways uh also you can subscribe to rate us on your favorite podcast app and watch video versions on facebook and youtube you can also ask your uh, google home and your uh uh, Amazon Echo and, and actually your your Apple HomePod to play us on on TuneIn, Google Google Podcasts, or wherever you would like. <coughs> Sorry, that yelling threw me off a little bit. Um, <coughs> you can catch us every Tuesday at the Awesome Cast Facebook Live at 7 p.m. Eastern Roundabout. And, uh, and of course, if you are catching us later or on one of the other platforms that we are streaming here on Tuesdays, uh, and have some comments or just want to tell us what we got wrong as we're telling you the wrong version of iOS or whatever the case may be, uh, you can uh, hit tweet us at AwesomeCast with the hashtag AC453. Uh, for this episode, if I got my episode right. Uh, also, thank you to our streaming partners, RiversEdgePGH.com and The405Media.com. Check out your local listings on those websites for when we do go live over there. And thank you, everybody, who is listening over there as well. Again, uh, hashtag us, uh, AC453, uh, uh, if you have any comments on what's going on on the show, if you're listening on those other platforms. Thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesomecast, including our Coffee Club $5 level friends, who will be listening to some of our uh, home automation stories on the Patreon this week. Our friends Matt Weller, John Diggy DeGore, and John Carmen, and uh, the fan of the show $1, the longest Patreon supporter for us, uh, Michael Fedor. Thank you so much much uh it really kind of shows that we're doing something right if somebody actually put money in the pot for uh what we're doing on this show and we do really really appreciate it and you guys can support the show too at patreon.com slash awesome cast um so speaking of home automation the a train got an update today and uh or no you got an update to the a train i got an update uh i think uh, this released it came out last friday 
I think it was two Fridays ago. Okay. They were up for pre-order a couple weeks ago. Anyways, the item is... The item is the Echo Show 5. I feel like I just price a right, price a right at that. <laughs> so um, if you're familiar with the Echo Show, it used to be, I think, a 9-inch screen. It was, a, it was a much bigger screen. They came out with the Show 5, which I thought was interesting because it, hit it hits a price point. It's $90 mm-hmm. um, for a touchscreen-based Echo device. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're familiar with the spot, which is the circular one, um, that spot comes in and it's a small, it's a small, like size of a baseball mm-hmm. sphere. That's 120 bucks or maybe a hundred. Yeah. I think it's 119 99. So the show five, I, I picked that up. I got the charcoal colored one. Um, super cool because I can say, Hey, you know who show me my front door, show me my basement, show me my living room. Um, cause I have wise camera cameras yeah. um, and the ring. Um, it can. The other thing I like about it is if you use, and I'm not an avid Amazon photo user, mm-hmm. but if you upload photos and put them in albums, you can set an album to be like a rotating background on the device. Okay. So it's like an always on picture frame. Um, I have mine configured to show like the weather and some tech news and some stuff like that. So you're walking by it. Mm-hmm. Um, you can see some information. Of course, any of the, hey, you know who commands work just like they would with a dot or anything else. But you now have the screen. So like you were saying, I think you tried to use your dot with the wise camera and there's nowhere to display. <laughs> yeah, it. I forgot. that was like, oh, no, the function of this. I was hoping <laughs> it would be something for me to say, hey, a train, um, I'm leaving and turn on the notifications. That's what I want. I wonder if you can set that up. Somehow. There's a guard mode, but it's more of a notification when you turn it on of like glass breaking and things like that. Yeah, that's the goal. So, yeah. but I want, I want like the, uh, I turn it off and on when I leave and I start getting um, detected motion notifications. You should go into the routine. Mm-hmm. So if you go into the Alexa app on your, sorry. Oh, oh no. Fail. Bleep that out. That's post. okay. Try watching Monday um, Night Raw with a hmm, bliss. Um, that's true. I did trip it this week. It was crazy. Um, if you go into the routines in the app, mm-hmm. you can see, like, you can create kind of like recipes. Okay. And you can even say, when I say this, and you can chain things together. So, so does it have, does the wise cam have the function? I feel like we were having this conversation before. Um, does the wise cam have the function to turn on and off settings via a lot? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yo, so, here's the trick go into the app. And pick your devices and see what your options are under there because okay. every it's okay. up to them of what. Yeah, I didn't think I saw, I saw much, but um, but wise uh, camera, if you're listening, this would be a really cool feature to it add would to your, be, to your it would be a train API. Well, they, they, the wise just announced like new stuff uh, like today. I think it came through that they're they're doing um uh, person detection. Yes, and I think that's going to be because I get a lot of motion sensor with like the train went by or there's lights flashing because people somebody turned around in the middle of the street or something, right? I'll get a notification for that. I've seen some third parties like build skills for other people's devices. I am super surprised that they haven't opened up that store to like monetary transactions to pay for skills. Mm -hmm. Like, cause what's other than being cool and getting kudos and verbal fame. Mm hmm. If you're not the manufacturer of the product, is there a lot of incentive to build Alexa skills for other people's products? Because, by the way, I was in the Ale- I was in the app, and you just triggered it. Oh, sorry. It's all right. Um, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. So, uh, it, that, that is we mess with this. I, I thought mostly I was going to be messing with uh, Google Home. As I'm thinking about like you know updates I'm doing to the house right now, it's like, well, do I just grab a bunch of homes? I think I'm probably going to just have both side by side in every room. And so that's what we've done. Um, yeah, because I mean, I, I a Google. Well, we don't even have them side by side in every I, room. I feel like Google is more functional because it connects with my music app. It, it, it you know there are things I I don't want to ask. What's a, your music app? Uh, Google Music. So ah. yeah. Um. So I went with because it's funny because. A train, mm-hmm. and I haven't tried it on the Google stuff yet. In fact, I got one of their devices 
sitting on my doorstep right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I have Apple Music connected to yeah. A train. Yeah, they open that up. So so yeah, I can. Hey, I placed my bet, and I'm pretty ingrained in it. So, but I'll tell you what. But every other device I've made sure works cross platform. Mm-hmm. So I can do all of my lighting, all of that and you could kind do it on of both. stuff yeah, on yeah. both. And it's just being aware of it, right? So, mm-hmm. uh, I, well, I I'm at the beginning of this journey, Chilla, and uh, working on that and working on just inventive ways to get internet in my house that aren't dropping a whole other internet fee because i have i pay for too much internet as it is right now between here and phones and you have a lot of pipes i have a lot of pipes and i can't figure out how to get the pipe to directly go into the house from the pipe i already pay for is if that makes sense you need a longer pipe not a bigger pipe (laughs) not a thicker pipe (laughs) not a thicker pipe i need a longer pipe yes but a but an invisible longer pipe maybe. This is for this is for a Patreon discussion. Uh, anyways, the biggest thing for me this week is Doctor Mario World came out a day early. I do believe because I believe July tenth was the date. Oh no, it's, it's still logging in. Okay, we'll just wait for that. Uh, I, I I had the set up and I thought I had it queued. Um, Doctor Mario World. It is the mobile version, the mobileification of another uh, Nintendo um, application. And, uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's different. I was a little weirded out when I saw that it's going to be like upside down, basically. And it's a little more, it's a little more touch interface. You can move things around. Uh, we were, we were talking about showing somebody earlier and that there was a pretty big Dr. Mario player. And I was like, it feels like cheating because when, you know, m- remember you would line up a pill and it would drop and then, and then it would fall where it falls. Now you can move it around as it falls. And again, it just kind of feels like cheating for me. Uh, so I don't know if, if that's, if other people feel the same way, but um, also like depending on the level, there's like, you know, there's, there's a lot of different tools and I'm, I'm Dr. Bowser for instance on this and I can do a, do a thing and he has a power move. I think he'll let me do the power move. Oh, he's not there yet. Um, but I, I'm like 36 levels in and this came out this morning. Uh, <laughs> so, so I, I, I'm into it, but also I'm also in a in, in, in a state where I will just do anything Nintendo on my phone because I haven't had a Nintendo device for two generations. So I'm kind of I'm kind of thirsty for Nintendo content. I think that's why I've gone so far in on things like Pokemon and and Dr. Mario. Like you're probably not quite as excited about Dr. Mario World if you have a Switch at home and are already playing Dr. Mario. So I don't know because I do take my Switch places with me but I don't feel like it's, it's not the thing you have all the time. It's not. Yeah. And so here, so I don't always get a seat on the train mm-hmm. and it's not comfortable enough to stand up and play, play a switch switches. Play two a handed. Switch. Yeah. 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 So I would say for me, and I'm playing it right now as we're talking, <laughs> um, I really like the phone touch single touch single hand type games Mm -hmm. and i i would disagree because right now things like well you're playing harry potter now right right yeah um right now i'm playing one-handed yeah you can do that while you're podcasting for instance and eating m&ms with the other hand Mm -hmm. and and having your super patriotic patriotic mountain dew it's delicious (laughs) it's like melted popsicles it is um i can't believe i mean how long did you play to get to level 35 i played for like probably an hour straight when i okay. got up today and found it was on and then i, I played just intermittently through the day like i'm I, on I, level I, thir- I took like i was trying to take like five minute breaks with my editing so so that i wasn't you know getting all strung out on editing today um and just again just poking at it a little bit here and there so but it's got the same vibe like i've, I've been waiting for mario kart to come out after getting a, a 10 beautiful days with the beta um and dragging my uh, uh samsung s6 around you know giving it a break from doing vr to do uh, uh mario kart um you know i i, I want to get back to that but this is a nice like this is nice it's very mario it's 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 you know i i'm you know you do have the freemium stuff like you get five hearts um up there in the corner and and each one of them takes about a half an hour to um regenerate so you have, but you get one if you win, right? So it's gonna when you get to the harder levels, it's gonna be a little tougher, right? So did Mario Kart had that kind of mechanism, and uh, it and and there's you can buy gems and and to get certain things like extra characters and things uh, at random. But uh, 
you know, I, I, it, it does seem like something that it doesn't feel like it's going to get in the way of things. So uh, one article, Dr. Mario World has um, what, what, what's good about Dr. Mario and, and what's good and bad about uh, mobile games, <laughs> so, <laughs> which I think is mostly accurate. So, But it's out there. It's free. It's on uh, both platforms, uh, um, Android and uh, Apple. So uh, go check that out over there. All right, want to give a shout out as soon as I turn off the Dr. Mario and take a look at my document over here to our friends uh, feeding the awesome cast, our friends at Slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Four locations at PNC uh, Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Beachview, Carnegie, and the East End. Hey, you can go in and grab a slice while you're uh, uh, hiding from the rain like they were on Saturday night. Uh, so uh, go check them out, sliceonbroadway.com to find out more information. I do believe they, I think they have some interesting options for, for people with dietary restrictions and things like that I've been hearing about. Um, I'm looking at them and looking at alternatives for my dietary uh, uh, situation myself because I'm trying to uh, lose weight, be a little more conscious of things. Uh, so check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. Follow their social media. Did you see Rico from Slice? Was doing the bottle cap challenge? No, I did not. Oh, this is something. Did he something. knock it off? This is something. Well, I, you know, I don't want to spoil it for you, but I think you need to check out Slice on Broadway on Instagram, and I think you need to go see, uh, I believe it's on their Facebook as well, um, and uh, you can check out the Rico uh, Slice on Broadway uh, bottle cap. If you don't know, it is, do, you, do you know? Does everybody know what the bottle cap challenge is out there? This is where uh, Jason Statham uh, did a, a roundhouse kick, basically, and and kicked the the top, like spun off the top of a, a, a bottle cap of like a beer bottle or something. Uh, our friends in the wrestling world, Facade, did it. He's also the Neon Ninja, so I, you know, of course he did. Uh, here's a little preview of it right here if you guys are on video. Uh, he's at it. It's slow motion. He's going at that bottle right there. It's a, it's a Budweiser, and he misses. He misses, but that's okay. Because he is on his way with the second round right into a wonderful slice of pizza. So there you go, our friends. I love, they're, 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 they got to be the most fun pizza place uh, that anybody can get into. But anyways, check out our friend Slice on Broadway. They are uh, often... A regular awesome thing of the week for us here at the Awesome Cast. All right. Hey, want to give a shout out to, uh, I think this is going to be a regular occurrence now, by the way, but I want to check in our friend of the show, Chachi, has been uh, working on something. If you remember, he used, he used to do a little website called ChachiSays.com. They didn't let it lap and some a-hole uh, grabbed it and, and wants like five grand for it. Uh, but you can go to chachisays.wordpress.com, and uh, he has returned and restarted his 1,001 video games to play before you die. So He's all the way through the N64. All the way through the N64. N64. He's had a lot of fun stuff going on. Like I know he, he really invested in retro, retro pi, not retro pi, but retrocade, um, uh, like a, a Linux version. And uh, he he got a really sweet video game uh, controller uh, pack that was like it was like the NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis, PlayStation, N sixty four. But the N sixty four one was the one that I was impressed with because yeah, why one would make that controller in today's world? Right, right. Yeah, for anybody else, right? Yes. N sixty four games. Um, he says it's a pain in the butt to um, map the buttons. To map the buttons. So. Um, so go check that out. He again, he's threw a lot of the N sixty four, Mario Kart, Pilot Wings, uh, Super Mario sixty four, Star Fox sixty four, Space Station, Silicon Valley. What is that? I don't know. DMA Design System, uh, N sixty four, Silicon Valley. Okay, all right. So so he is at it. He is up to as of this game number seven. But I understand. I think at least the first twenty are in the can, and he is going at this. Uh, pretty heavy so go read it over at uh chachi says dot wordpress.com i just want to kind of check in 1080 snowboarding is that one that you played i think i, I played a little played bit that. of that one uh i was just playing that, some... that was one that didn't they have that in the arcade too where you actually stood on the that might be that might be they had a lot of arcade versions for for i think in n64 era right i definitely played uh 
Goldeneye. Mm-hmm. Goldeneye. Mario Kart 64, I actually have on my Wii. It's still too expensive to get Mario Kart for the Wii or the GameCube. That's why I've never really had a lot of Mario Kart games because you can't get them used. Actually, I did pick up a, a game. I did pick up for like $10 Mario Kart for the Wii, but it had a scratch on it and you can't get past the character screen. Yeah. You tried toothpaste? I tried toothpaste. If anybody, if anybody knows any disc repair uh, solutions, I'd love to hear them. Uh, something that I haven't tried yet. But yeah, go check out our friend Chachi. Um, so in the uh, your stories out there, I don't know. Do I want to talk about hand dryers that suck in fecal bacteria? Listen, the bathroom is a disgusting place no matter what you use, and technology is not helping. Let's just leave it at that. Um, <laughs> Brian, when he's not talking about poop, when he gives us a story, um, he, 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 he dropped this other one in here. A paralyzed man uh, regains the use of his hands thanks to an innovative nerve surgery. Um, so this guy, uh, 34, in Australia, he broke his vertebrae when he landed on his head in a dirt bike accident in, in 2015. Um, he couldn't control anything below his nipples, he said. And he was actually doing uh, basketball. Uh, he had a nerve transfer surgery that helped him regain the use of his hands there. So that is amazing that we're at this point. Nerves were not something that was repairable in the, in the, in the, pre, in, you know, if your nerves die, they're done. Right. So oh, it's, that's, that's a really awesome thing. So um, good news there from Brian. Thanks. Thanks, Brian Crawford. Brian Crawford's doing some really cool things. PGH museums, go follow them on Instagram and uh, uh, see what they're up to. Uh, getting some really cool stuff around the city. Our friend Chris Whitlatch is always up for the experiences. Guys, I saw Chris Whitlatch in the wild this week. He, we were, we were sitting down getting, having sandwiches after the furry parade, and, and Dutters looks across, is like, "Is that Chris?" And I look over, and I was like, "Yeah, I think that is him." I'm watching the manor, and I was "Yeah, that's definitely him." And then I looked at it, and I was like, "You know what he's doing? He's doing a red light district tour." Was he? He. He had to have been because he was at the corner there with the Citizens Bank, like across from the uh, the the Smithfield Garage, and he went oh, down and yes. they stopped in front of the Harris Theater. And I'm like, and and if you were been around in the last for me, I've been around the last 20 years here, and I know where all the porn shops used to be down there before it became the Cultural District. Um, so, uh, it, it, so he was definitely doing the red light tour and this is something he does and if i got the right website i can i'll he has plugged this on the show before but i'll give him a plug over at universalwit.com i think i got the right if one. you don't have the right one it could get really interesting no really this quick. is different wait is this a site oh it is he's updated cool yeah uh universalwit.com he'll, he'll have information on those and a lot of other um, experiences that they have going on over there so i'll give him a plug for that but the story he was talking about at San Diego Comic Con, let's go, Chilla. Actually, we should we should decide to go to San that Diego Comic Con some year. Just we have to do it once, right? I would. San Diego is a really cool town. I've been to San Diego. I've never been to San Diego. I've never been to San Diego Comic Con. Well, one more reason, Chilla, is an immersive Batman experience that's coming this year. So I'm interested. So I was reading the article that he posted, and one of the things is. A VR experience mm-hmm. combining a VR headset and a skydiving booth. And you skydive into Gotham. Mm-hmm. Even without the booth, that would be pretty darn cool. I hope they I hope they release that app too. So this is like one of those wind tunnel kind of booths kind of things that yeah. you're floating. So you got the helmet on and you're floating. Man, I hope that's a wireless helmet. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but I mean th- those are those are pretty standard these days, right? Uh, so, wow, that's that's going to be awesome. And the videos from this are going to be cool, at least, if you don't get a chance to be part of that experience. So, I mean, we've seen that. We've seen the fly like the bird one that you're, like, on a table that moves while mm-hmm. you're flying. Uh, like, Didn't you do that at the airport? I, no, I watched them do it at the airport, but I I needed to catch my plane. Um, so, But you could have just flown there. <laughs> I know, right? In VR. I know. I don't think they would have paid for that trip. Anyways... Uh, but no, if you got, you're lucky enough to go to San Diego Comic Con, please let us know if you're checking out the Batman experience that's going to be a part of that as well. I'm sure the line's going to be insane. Also, Dave Ponder shared with us, and I know you were sharing with your Apple friends today about the Apple updates. They updated the MacBook Air and Pro 
killed the 12 inch MacBook. That's the uh, Mac MacBook nothing, uh, not Pro, not anything. It's just the MacBook they put out a little bit ago. Um, the first one that RIP'd the light up Apple. I'm so sad. I still miss the light up Apple on the back of my screen. Just putting that out there. I still there. have it. You still Probably have not for it. much longer, but I still That's have right. it. Right. And then ended the uh, MacBook Escape. So they basically, um, anything without a touch bar um, on the MacBook Pros uh, are now gone. And uh, so the lower end MacBook Pros do have touch bars on them now. So they have been updated. When they lowered, it looks like they lowered the price. Entry level for the MacBook Pro is now twelve ninety nine. Twelve ninety nine for a MacBook Pro. It features eighth generation Intel processor, Touch ID, and Touch Bar. Awesome. Which that's so my I'm I'm at this. I want to try to make it for another six ish months. Mm -hmm. I have a twenty fifteen early twenty fifteen MacBook Pro, and I won't be able to use Sidecar. Oh, so and you're and you're and it's it's and you're still the old keyboard too. Yes. Yeah. So I'm hoping. So I'm not having much problems with the keyboard. I'm just going to put that out there since that's the big talk around my all the latest ones. Mm -hmm. I just hope when uh, uh, apparently when it breaks that they're still supporting the keyboard fixes. Oh, I'm sure they'll be. I got Apple Care, so there's at least that. So hey. Apple's kind of a magical thing, isn't it? Well, at least it used to be. Uh, but uh, 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 whether you're looking for a custom handcrafted gift or something to soothe the soul, our friends at Sparkle Dragons Magical Emporium right here in Beachview have you covered. Uh, be sure to stop at their website at sparkledragon.com. But if you're in the area, uh, not, and nothing beats a nice cup of tea and a chat with Joyce down there, I want to give a shout out to her, uh, somebody who I know does share the shows that we're doing here and uh, uh, a friend of the neighborhood uh, here in Beachview. And also, added bonus, two doors down from Slice on Broadway. So, yeah, you can visit Joyce and have a slice. We're, we, see, we're just inviting you for the Beachview experience here on the Awesome Cast. Go check them out, knock on our door, and see if we're doing anything. Maybe you do all that before you come down for the Awesome Cast and join us here in the audience. So, shout out our friends there. Sparkle Dragon's Magical Emporium at sparkledragon.com. Furry Parade! I got my sign! I got my sign. First of all, I got two things here. First of all, you, you get down there. There's always somebody with an I Heart Anthrocon sign uh, that they're passing out, right? Secondly, I don't know how I feel like this. Apparently, our, our city's motto for the year is pull up a chair. You're welcome here. Okay. I don't know. I, I got, I question the slogan. I, I, you know what? I love the intent, but I can't say I like the but slogan. But I feel like when I pull up a chair, I'm going to block my parking spot. And you're not welcome <laughs> uh, Yeah, because you're talking about a chair <laughs> in Pittsburgh. That's what we talk about, right? Yeah. So, like, are we just, like, are we going to pull up a chair in my parking spot? And, oh, I lost the sign. We'll get it later. Um, I'm gonna pull, you're gonna pull up a chair, and we're all gonna have a conversation in our parking parking space. One that is dangerous. Okay, <laughs> so, you're gonna get run over. But anyways, the Anthrocon parade. Uh, uh, one uh, Doug Durda of ShouldIDrinkThat.com, which I think he recorded this past weekend. Uh, rumor has it. Um, oh, it was, I think Podner's talking about the uh, the uh, laptops are a hundred dollars less for stu college students. It's good to hear. Um, I don't know why this link is not loading to go to my furry parade. I don't think I went last year, Chilla. I don't know why. I, I thought was you did. Was it last year? I, I feel like it was. It's been a couple years since I've been down for this. But once again, the um, as part of Anthrocon, it's the largest furry uh, event uh, con in in the area. I think they said something like twenty thousand furry uh, furries participated in the parade. Was that right? Two thousand, maybe. Maybe it was two. I didn't see the. I feel like it's two thousand. The pictures are amazing. Um, did you see the one, um, oh, what's her name? Crystal. Brandy. Brady. Brady. She had with, uh, rocket. <gasps> no, I didn't see that. Yes. One. Check that out. But it's great. But they, they always do uh, lately. They've been doing the parade. Uh, probably. So we stopped furry stalking them in the hotel. Um, all of us normals, but, uh, <laughs> and they'll do it. Like it, it, it's that little bit underneath the, uh, David Lawrence convention center. So it's mostly shaded, which is really nice, especially for them. Probably. Uh, but yeah, they circle uh, up and back and then they'll open up one of those lower rooms and you can kind of meet and greet and take pictures with the furries. So a really cool experience there. If you're, uh, it just, it's just the, the, the most bonkers thing. Every time I go down and see this thing, I just come back saying, man, I love this town that this is the kind of stuff that happens here. Right. So, um, 
It was, it was really cool. Uh, if you, it, they're always here around Fourth of July, so if you want to mark your calendars for next year, um, they you know just just walk down walk down through the cultural district, the 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 pizza place around the corner. Um, did you feel like this was as big bigger? It, it felt like that parade ha- uh, just went on forever. Okay. Yeah. So I I don't know because I'll be honest with you, being as a person who works in town i feel like i would normally see mm-hmm. a number of furries just maybe even... they just don't go your way anymore i mean there's just plenty happening up around the convention center but i'm not there's that pl- far from the convention center uh, no you're not no you're not uh, obviously and, and but... i feel like a, a lot of them would stay in what would it be the william penn and the weston the west yeah no the weston's right across the street from the mm-hmm. convention center isn't it uh, yes, that's the one that's like connected down there. Yeah, the William Penn is up on William Penn Place, like across from BNY Mellon. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them would stay in that hotel and would stay. Um, it used to be the Double Tree. I can't remember what it's called this week. Um, <laughs> but no, I would see a lot of them coming out of the hotels in the morning or coming back at lunchtime for a moment. Yeah. Um, I didn't see any of that this year. So either see, they looked there like was there, more available. It looked like there were plenty of them. But again, and maybe it's because of where the holiday fell and something. Maybe that's why it was a little different this year, too. So you never know. Um, so uh, not only does Missy get to go to California, visit her folks, and uh, have some... Uh, I, I've set her up with some some very um, podcast related um, assignments while she's out there. Um, she also got to feel her first, I think, her first earthquake out there. A lot of big stuff happening out there. She's up in Did Northern she California. Feel two or two she, of them. Or she just, just felt them? the one that I'm aware of, and maybe she can correct us in the chat room if, she fe- if she's uh, 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 felt more. But of course, they're kind of more centered around the LA area, and there's a lot have been happening down there. Well, apparently there has been an LA, LA has an earthquake uh, warning system, and uh, they haven't had this. This apparently got implemented in 2018, and actually has not had an opportunity to be used. Um, and the earthquakes happened, and the system did not go off. That's the wrong one. But um, but it did not get off. But they weren't supposed to. Because where the uh, uh, epicenter was was not something that would do damage to L.A. County where the system is based. So the 64.4 earthquake uh, was in Ridgecrest, California, about 150 miles away. That quake was... Um, um, the first test of this, it's called Shake Alert, by the way. And this is an app that you get on your phone uh, if you're in the, well, I guess you can get it anywhere, but in the L.A. County area uh, uh, specifically. So based on that in the city, where probably the most damage would happen, um, that's where you would get the notification if it affected your area to a damaging impact. Again, 6.4, pretty heavy, but by the time it gets out to as far as north of San Francisco where my wife is or all the way down to San Diego. Um, then it's not quite as impactful as uh, the poor people at Ridgecrest are probably a little uh, uh, in arms about that. But um, but interesting that we have that. And, and again, it was the first test of this. And um, you know, we hope it doesn't get a lot more testing to happen, right? So we'll see. Um, Shilla, you were right about Microsoft and 1.0. 1.0 isn't isn't a thing? No, no, no. 1.0. Oh, so apparently, let's see. I was, I was skimming this earlier. Uh, the Windows 1.0 is connected to Stranger Things. Now, I'm only an episode and a half through Stranger Things. Um, but apparently, um, they will... Oh, geez. Um, not only is, is the company is launching a Windows 1.11 app. Yes, an app, which you can download, apparently... Uh, I believe this is on the micro the Microsoft Store, um, if I'm not mistaken, and it's got the full executable and everything. And yeah, it is. If you jump into their site, it is about the Stranger Things connection. You can get the app. It's a uh, <laughs> 1.0 PC inspired app. Let's see, where is it? Yeah, is it, this is on the uh, Microsoft Store. Oh, so I can install this on this computer over here. I'm installing it right now. <laughs> of course you are. Um, but not only that, they're going to have 
a uh, if, if you've uh, watched Stranger Things, you know there is a Camp Nowhere, um, and they are going to have uh, Camp Nowheres um, in their Microsoft stores, apparently. Uh, Camp Nowhere. Visit Camp Nowhere uh, at the Microsoft store to <laughs> to make a uh, Stranger Things video or code your own game and roll the o- roll the arcade like Mad Max. There you go. I hope that's not spoiling, if 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 anything, or that just gobbledygook that you don't understand because you haven't watched the show. Who knows? I haven't I haven't seen any of the new episodes yet. So I again an episode and a half. I just started it last night because I couldn't hold off anymore, and uh, it, it's it's pretty fun so far. It's it's wonderfully eighties. So, um, how is that still installing? How big is it? How 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 much of a download is it? Um, where'd my app store go? Uh oh. It's 276 meg. Really? Much larger lo- than the two discs that, that win. The first I was going to say, I don't think that fit on two I floppies. I think Windows 311 was on four. How so big were floppy disks back then? 1.4 1. 1. 1. 4 4 meg. Megabytes. Megabytes. Not gigabytes. Maybe they forgot to compress this. Maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Like, well, they, well, they basically had to build a digital version of the computer itself, didn't they? What's well, funny because the screenshot reminds me of like commodore 64 looking screen gradient but Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see oh just got installed oh geez it's loading i'm trying to log into uh one of my other computers so we could do that the progress bar goes in reverse because it's traveling back to 1985 are you serious (laughs) that's how it loads up oh on your surface surface pro correct yes and and dear microsoft i don't know if it's me or what, but my surface gets entirely ridiculously hot. Oh no, you got the lap warming problem. Um, what's going on with uh, uh, Amazon and Google? So um, I there was an announcement, and I don't know how to get out of the Microsoft app. <laughs> and we're stuck in 1985 forever. Tell me, tell me what Google and Amazon were doing in 1985. Um, <laughs> So there, I think it was announced a couple months ago that Amazon and Google were going to give up on their feud and shake hands and YouTube was coming back to Amazon devices and Chromecast was going to support um, Amazon Prime. And it happened today. Um, the the YouTube app for Amazon Fire TV based devices, which includes a number of the thumbsticks, include and and the Fire TV Cube, um, or the I think it's the Fire TV Cube. Um, YouTube is now available for those devices from the Amazon App Store, and in addition, Amazon Prime updated today, and you can now cast Amazon Prime to any Chromecast device. Hmm. So if you remember, there was a there was a point in time not too too long ago where Amazon decided that it was going to try to aggravate everyone and remove all their devices from the Amazon store and yeah. messed with the search. Where if you searched for Apple TV, the first thing that came up was the Fire TV stick. Um, so fast forward to today, they Apple TV is back in their store. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to release or have released a Prime app for Apple TV. And Apple will put it on the device. Um, and they're the Google piece. To me, this is a big deal because using... I actually watch YouTube on the big screen quite often. Mm-hmm. Um, and being able to do it right from the Fire Cube is going to be nice in my basement. Nice. Especially because it'll do 4K. Yeah. So I'm excited for that. Good. Good. Finally, it's over. Well, peace in our time. Peace. And oh isn't my. tomorrow um Prime Day? Uh, yeah, they got bigger problems with Prime Day, apparently. Um, the strikes are going to be a problem tomorrow. That's so. just the people in the distribution center. Yeah, yeah. No, you'll yeah, get, that's not going to do anything. You'll get a deal. You just won't ever get the device <laughs> or whatever you purchase. I'm ready for my $5 Amazon Echo Dot. Uh <laughs> Oh, so so I, I I am I am amazed that the homes and the dots are like standard twenty twenty five dollars now. That's nice to see. Although they were sending us Google Homes basically for being customers of of 
Google Drive a few months ago too. <laughs> I think we have a third one lying around here somewhere. It's somewhere. Yeah. So well, I. I you know what? I ordered the blue one so my wife could have a blue one, and then she went and ordered her own that was neither of those colors, uh, the, the, the black one I have or anything like that. So we just have we just have like Google Homes falling out of the sky around here. So <laughs> we have yeah. we have one we have one Google Home like the small speaker type device. Mm-hmm. Then I have I just got the Mini Hub. How much was a Windows download for you? 275 meg. Mine is 774. For the app? Yeah, on the on the Microsoft Store, right? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's different for the kind of... Do you have like a, 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 a different CPU in there or something? Is I5, that... Core i5. Core i5. Mine's a Core i5. I don't know. I don't know, but it's definitely saying 774 megabytes is coming down right now. So there it is right there. That for you guys visual if you're with us on video that's what it looks like it is uh, does send netflix on it that is a wonderful wonderful cross promotion there anyways i'm playing with that on the break uh what else do we got here i think we've hit all the stories sir oh i forgot about one thing speaking of throwbacks i got to pick something up a week ago the playstation classic now uh, my wife is not happy with me in the chat room um the PlayStation Classic was twenty five dollars uh, at Best Buy and Amazon. This is the you know the mini console, just like you know the Nintendo Super Nintendo one. They originally released this for a hundred dollars. It came with twenty games, a lot of obscure stuff, but it has like the first Metal Gear Solid, the first Grand Theft Auto, this top down. Top down. I yeah. liked the top down game. Right, I had it for the right. PC. Right. Yeah. I played some of that. Right. I, I have Grand Theft Auto two top down on on. The PlayStation. I've played a bit of that. I think. Do I also have London? I might have the London one too. Um, I think I actually have them on because I think I grabbed the full pack on on Steam a, a while back. Um, but uh, but there's like, hey, here Battle Arena to Shinden, which I think was one of the first 3D fighters they had on it. Jumping Flash, where you're this rabbit, this 3D rabbit, and it's um, it's just a weird launch title game that they had. I remember playing the demo of. I don't think I've ever played uh, that. Yeah, I haven't played much, uh, more than a demo, but it's really interesting. Destruction Derby, uh, Ridge Racer Type 4, uh, it, you know, it, it, no no Street Fighter, but there's P- Super Puzzle Fighter on it, apparently. Uh, that I've been playing a bit of that. Intelligent Cube, I've really enjoyed, if you're not familiar with that. I've never it's heard. hard to explain. It's kind of a puzzle game. Uh, <laughs> so, so t- again, like nothing uh, feels very blockbuster there. Original Resident Evil, I mean, there's your blockbusters, right? Um, Abe's Odyssey. Uh, so, so nice. Nothing past 2000, mostly from like 1995 through 99, right? You know, and remember that when you play these, because some of them have not held up, especially when you stretch them with an HDMI out to your 42 uh, inch television. Pretty... Oh, they didn't take care of that. No, they did not upgrade the graphics. They're they're they Yeah, f- but the, the, the yeah, I see what you're saying. But well, I feel like the Nintendo they at least had a yeah, they at least had a mode, right? They at least that smoothed things over. Yeah. Yeah, they did. They did. They didn't redo every no piece of the No, the, no, no. They just the, had like here's a scan line filter mm-hmm. that helps things out a little bit, right? You don't get that. So things look a little messier, I feel, in some of these. Twisted metal is on this. Uh, Wild Arms, Final Fantasy Seven. Um, the open button works. Typically, it would. What op- does it do? It when you're playing a multi-disc game like Final Fantasy or Wild Arms, it helps you change the disc to the virtual disc next disc. <laughs> it opens the thing and you select the a menu pops up and you select the disc that you want. Yep. Does the does it pop up? Uh, no, no, it doesn't physically pop up. A menu pops a up menu on your pops screen. Up. Okay. Um, and also, if you're interested, apparently it's highly hackable. Easily, very easily hackable. They're, apparently, they offloaded the code onto a PC, looked at it, and found the key. That's how much... I wonder if you can load other emulators on there. Uh, I am only aware of the PlayStation ones. But I feel like it's mostly just a Raspberry Pi. It feel it feels like a Raspberry Pi in a mini PlayStation case. The other cool thing is it comes with two controllers because I think the other ones only come with one, the Nintendo ones, mm-hmm. and they are USB, and you can plug them into a PC 
or your retro pie and they will work very nice very nice i finally have a fourth controller for that computer over there playing the he-man side scroller game we played a lot of that last week um yeah Oh, Chilla, a lot of awesome things this week. But uh, before we get out of here, I do want to give a shout to our friends, us, Psychic Media <laughs> Services, uh, from sporting events to music video production uh, to conferences and everywhere in between. Uh, our team here at Psychic Media Services, now um, cross country, apparently, uh, team at my Psychic Media Services, has you covered as a sidekick to your superhero product project. Uh, what next big thing can we help you with? Go find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. We are, geez, just today we are working on uh, a new podcast on the way, uh, video highlights for our friends that we traveled with uh, uh, this this past uh, spring uh, for some big events all across the country. A lot of cool things in the future, live streaming, podcasting, video production, um, a lot of really, really cool things uh and the works here and uh, we hope if you guys have a big project out there we can help you with that so um coming up here first hey i want to shout out we did have a video game stream on friday our friends um our wrestling friends of brohemoth and billy ruxpin your imaginary friend had billy and bros ex- excellent adventure um they played a, a fun game called Guacam- guacamelee it's kind of like a castlevania metroidvania kind of game but with lucha wrestlers it's it's i've always wanted to play What's it, it for uh, just about every console. Okay. Uh, there's there's actually a Guacamelee uh, 2 as well. But yeah, Steam, Xbox, I, I imagine PlayStation as well. They were playing on the Xbox One. Um, so so look out for that. They were also playing some game. I don't know. I was playing something else over there and let them go. All of a sudden, bad German was being yelled. And I don't know. What, it was a really peculiar game. But go check that out. That's over on the IndieWrestling.us Twitch. And I think it is also on our Facebook page as well, uh, streamed in captured on both of those platforms if you want to go check that out again another shout out for our friend since he's in the chat room chachi says at dot wordpress.com to catch up on the latest of his 1001 games journey over there and of course uh we are scheduled to be back this thursday morning with our friends at the pittsburgh current podcast you can check out this past week's pittsburgh current podcast uh there was actually a really great um conversation with a uh, congressional candidate uh this week uh we and again we had a couple just a couple weeks ago uh discussion with the 25th presidential candidate uh uh, uh joe stestak uh this week it was jerry dickinson we just launched last thursday and of course interviews happening on our pro wrestling side we'll have those live on indie wrestling.us facebook um wednesday night at 7 p.m and 8 p.m uh, some of the local guys will be coming in and we'll be having conversations with them. A couple of younger guys in the business, too. So it'll be cool to get that kind of uh, younger perspective on some local pro wrestlers here. And uh, stay tuned for some other fun stuff in the wrestling world. Um, we do a lot of it. Uh, Chilla, what's going on with you? I can be found at Chillatech, chillatech.net. Um, John's Chill on the Facebooks, Chilla on the Twitters. And that's actually all that's going on with me. Unless you want to talk about re-leveling cement in your, on your patio. Um, that's the new house project. So. You're talking to the people redoing sidewalk across the street. I should. <laughs> maybe, they want, maybe they want to come over and do some, some back patio work. There you go. There you go. Go check that out over there. All right, guys. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks. Michael's been hanging out. He's been having fun. I think the sun's gone down. I think you can take those off now. The sun's down, but my 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 legs are still hot. <laughs> uh, an extra sauna bit in there. Um, but anyways, thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you everybody in the chat room, including Podner, uh, Chachi, Steve, and everybody else has popped in throughout the evening. That's been quiet out there, uh, but I've seen the numbers and you guys check it in. We'll see you guys next time. Uh, the, thank you, our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.